Hello everyone and welcome to <laughs> This is the Levant in Western Asia, and here's Lebanon. Now let's have a look, shall we? The story of Lebanon is a very, very ancient one, leading way back to those indefinite days of stones and bones. The people of archaic Lebanon were among the first to build urban settlements, the city of Jubail, or Byblos, being one of the oldest cities in the world. Lebanon made up a major portion of the Semitic-speaking Canaanite civilization, city dwellers, farmers, and shepherds, described in the Bible as the enemies of Israel. The Canaanites were involved in the Hyksos conquest of northern Egypt around 1650 BC. Two centuries later, however, the land of Canaan was conquered by the Egyptians under Tutmosa III. So Lebanon fell to Egyptian rule and influence until the time of the Bronze Age collapse, after which Lebanon's famous Phoenician civilization rose to prominence. The Phoenicians are best known for three things. First, inventing the alphabet. Second, Tyrian purple, a costly dye extracted from the secretions of certain species of sea snail. And third, being the finest mariners of the ancient world. The Phoenicians, whose two major cities were Tyre and Sidon, established a vast commercial enterprise with trading posts and colonies planted all across the southern Mediterranean, the greatest being Carthage in present-day Tunisia. The Greek historian Herodotus records an account, which he disbelieved, that Phoenician sailors circumnavigated the continent of Africa. King Hiram of Tyre, according to the Bible, allied with Israel's King Solomon, to whom he sent workers, gold, and Lebanon's legendary cedar wood for the construction of the first temple in Jerusalem. The biblical account also mentions the later marriage of a Phoenician princess to Ahab, king of northern Israel, the infamous Jezebel, who persecuted the prophets of Israel's God. Both northern Israel and Phoenicia ended up conquered by the Assyrians, who ruled until the Babylonians took over, who ruled until the Persians took over, who ruled until the Greeks took over, who ruled until the Romans took over. Throughout all these centuries, the Phoenicians persisted in their maritime merchant mastery and adopted the manners and customs of their conquerors. Lebanon was one of the first places Christianity spread to in the first century. Indeed, Jesus himself had traveled to the region, where he healed the daughter of a Syrophoenician woman. The new Christian faith was often subjected to persecution by the Roman authorities, and thus in Lebanon, groups of believers sought refuge in the mountains. More citizens of the region converted in the 4th century after the missionary efforts of the followers of the Syrian mystic monk Marun. These Christians became known as Maronites, and they exist to this day. Lebanon also became one of the earliest lands introduced to Islam after being conquered by the Arabs in the 7th century. Under the first three caliphates, Lebanon was part of this province, and the language of Arabic steadily became the common tongue. In the meantime, an esoteric syncretist religion arose in the 11th century, whose followers called the Druze make up about 5% of the country. After the First Crusade, the French nobleman Raymond of Toulouse initiated the conquest of a Levantine chunk, of which Lebanon was a part, called the County of Tripoli. The late 13th century saw Lebanon captured by the Mamluk sultans of Egypt, who ruled until they were conquered in the early 16th century by the Ottoman Turks under Selim I. In the 1600s, Lebanon thrived under the capable leadership of its Druze governor Fakhruddin II, an intelligent and tolerant man who encouraged trade with Europe and enriched and expanded his domains and ruled with what the Ottomans saw as troubling autonomy. Of course, the Ottomans eventually stepped in to stop him and did so in 1633, bundling him off to Constantinople where they chopped off his head. So the years passed and Beirut prospered as an important port, but 1860 saw a time of trouble in which Druze and Muslims of the region decided that slaughtering Christians was a good idea and they killed thousands with the Ottomans doing nothing to stop the violence, prompting French forces to intervene and restore order. The Ottoman Empire was on the way out, however, and after World War I, during which conflict many tens of thousands of Lebanese starved to death, France assumed command of Lebanon. The French brought a modernizing influence, and Lebanon acquired a modern mind. It wanted independence and proclaimed it in 1943, with Pshar al-Khuri becoming the first president. Lebanon enjoyed some good times in the 1960s, as tourism increased and Beirut became a center of banking. But then it began to unravel. The roughly equal demographic balance of Muslims and Christians began to change as conflict in Israel saw many thousands of Muslim Palestinian refugees arrive. Lebanon's Christians had many positions of power and were pro-Western, whereas Lebanon's Muslims were not pro-Western. And of course, neither were the Palestinians, who now made up a tenth of the population. So it all escalated into a civil war. Muslims versus Christians. Surrounding countries were inevitably dragged into the fray, and it was all a horrible, murderous mess. And as if it all wasn't bad enough, the Palestinians complicated things by 
by using Lebanon as a base to attack Israel, which naturally made Israel attack Lebanon in response. By 1983, we can see the sorry state of the country. A Shia Muslim militia called Hezbollah arose in this time as a reaction to Israel's presence in the land. So the war with its massacres, bombardments and bombings wound down and ended, and Lebanon was in ruins and mostly occupied by Syrian forces. The PLO were expelled and many thousands of Christians had emigrated. Lebanon then set about rebuilding. The year 2000 saw Israel withdraw from the south, and 2005 saw Syrian forces leave after the Lebanese people came together and peacefully protested in the Cedar Revolution. So things were nice and quiet and I'll wait another war. This one began after Hezbollah thought it was a nice day to fire rockets at Israel. So Israel invaded and there was fighting till a UN brokered ceasefire ended it. Hezbollah claiming victory. Troubles continued and escalated with neighboring Syria's civil war, which saw over a million refugees flee to the country. Lebanon, strained by the influx, was sluggish in ironing out pressing problems, and protests popped up again. And Lebanon today, though hardly free from cares and concerns, has attained a high level of human development, and we wish it all the best as it faces the future. So that's it for Lebanon, and that's all from me for now. Bye bye <laughs>